It's Tuesday, June 13th. My name's Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel. And back on Sunday, the 11th of June, with the return of summer intern Kellen Bodine, we were able to get up in the Husky and take a look at the Oroville Reservoir at 899 feet. The Oroville Reservoir is topped off for the first time since 2019. Let's check it out. And what a difference a record-breaking year of precipitation makes here on uh, Lakes Online with a current level of 899 feet. We can see that it, it, here's where it was at the same time in 2019 where the reservoir was last filled up to the brim. With the emergency spillway at an elevation of 901 feet, that's only one foot to go before water could spill over the emergency spillway. In all the previous years, back to 2018, other than 2019, there was not enough precipitation to fill the reservoir. We're now out of the, well out of the rain season here in California and into the dry season. So this allows operators to top off the reservoir. And now throughout the rest of the summer, they'll be slowly removing water from the reservoir for all the needs downstream and make room in anticipation of next year's rainfall. So how do operators keep the reservoir balanced? It's simple, outflow equals inflow. Here's the outflows over the last couple of days, ranging from 13,000 CFS down to 7,000 CFS, matching the inflow flows, 13,000, 10,000, down to 7,000 CFS. Most of the snow has melted already in the watershed above Oroville. What little is left amounts to about 14 inches or so of rainwater just in the higher elevations so the inflows are going to be very manageable from here on out and fortunately we've had a cool unseasonably cool spring a little bit wet spring which has helped to melt the snow slowly into the reservoir but it's almost all gone by now at least in the oroville watershed if we look back at the elevation of Oroville over the last 120 days, they want the reservoir to gently fill up to be topped off right about this time of year. And you can see right about here in the middle of March, they got a little ahead of schedule. Some heavy rain came in quite quickly. So they ramped up outflows, brought the reservoir back down to their flood control level that they wanted for that time of year and continued the slow filling of the reservoir. And here, if we look at the outflow chart for the same 120 day period, you can see a ramp up in the outflow in that same time period up to about 36,000 CFS. Remember this spillway, this newly rebuilt main spillway with its eight gates has a capacity of upwards, well, beyond 150,000 CFS. But at or above 150,000 CFS, that amount of flow would begin to impact dams and levees and water systems downstream of Oroville. So 36,000 CFS is a fraction of the total capability of the newly rebuilt main spillway at Oroville. So a summer intern, Kellen, back in town, uh, he was able to do all the flying in the Husky and allowed me to do all the filming which is a great help. He is currently working on building up 250 hours towards his commercial pilot rating. He's right at about 200 hours now. He's got his tailwheel endorsement, his private, and his instrument rating. On our way up to Oroville, we took a quick look at Bullard's Bar Reservoir just north of the Blanco Lirio Global Headquarters. They are no longer running the main spillway located right here, and this reservoir is also just about topped off. Looking to the east of Oroville, up into the higher country, above the watershed, you can see most all of the snow is gone, except in the very highest of elevations. Feather Falls is still flowing, but slowed down considerably. If we go to the Zoom Earth satellite view for today, you can see most of the snow in the area is gone, and these are simply clouds. Let's see what Sentinel looks like. The last good Sentinel pass I have is from the 8th of June, these are all clouds that have been hanging around part of the cool spring and we see just some snow left up here in the very high part of the high country above Oroville located down here. As we come into Oroville from the east on the south branch of the Feather River, 
this is all burned out area from previous fires. The yellow is indicative of scotch broom, a, an invasive species of brush, which comes from, well, overseas Ireland, which the common story is that it was used to pack whiskey barrels during the gold rush and took off here in the foothills and is now all over the place, especially after a wildfire burn. The boom and bust marijuana industry is mostly bust now as so many people moved into this rural area and set up these visqueen hoop houses that the bottom fell out of the market and they're having a tough time making a profit at these prices. So lots of boats enjoying the full reservoir at Orville and approaching, there's that, uh, remember this little tiny island area here? This was a land bridge all the way out to this island prior to the reservoir filling up. Now approaching the dam and spillway and emergency spillway at 900 feet, that puts the water level just one foot below the emergency spillway. And if it gets really windy out, yeah, water may very well splash right over the OG weir of the emergency spillway located right along here. So here's a close up view of the emergency spillway. Remember, this is the original OG weir, kind of an airfoil shaped bit of concrete. And this is the new roller compacted concrete formed in a stair step pattern to help dissipate the energy. And down here is the secant cutoff wall where you've got uh, tubes of concrete going all the way down to um, bedrock mounted in a secant sort of fashion as opposed to tangential. So all of these large concrete structures need to drain water that can collect underneath them and the emergency spillway has a number of drains in the emergency spillway and that's what you're seeing being drained here. Remember the water just behind the OG weir is pretty shallow in the area of the emergency spillway. Here below the emergency spillway, you can see the original erosion from the spillway during the spill, main spillway failure. Down here on the main spillway, we're looking at the Sunday's flow of about 13,000 CFS cubic feet per second. Here's another close look at the drains in the emergency spillway. All these little black boxes in here are those drains. In order to get the 13,000 foot flow, they just crack open four of the eight gates on the main spillway. This red band here is a crap trap catching debris, floating debris from before it gets down here and gets tangled up in the main gates of the main spillway. All the boat ramps are open. Here's where the water crashes down on the dentates or the big diffuser blocks at the bottom of the main spillway because that's quite a plunge that that water takes quite a bit of energy especially when you ramp up the flow out of the main spillway breaks up that flow and prevents erosion of the other side of the thermalito diversion pool at the bottom here here's a closer look at the gates in action and this spillway also has drains to drain water out from underneath the spillway remember that was one of the main causes of the original failure of this main spillway was a lack of drainage underneath the spillway plus a lack of concrete and these drains uh, will work their way out to the outside of the spillway and drain down here along the sides of the spillway. The dreaded green spot, right there. So water managers will easily be able to keep Oroville Reservoir balanced as long as the flow into the reservoir is greater than about 3,000 CFS. At 3,000 CFS is the minimum outflow they like to keep flowing out of the reservoir throughout the summer to make the ecology work and keep all the customers happy downstream of the Oroville Reservoir. Thanks so much for your support of this channel, especially the folks over on Patreon that make this content possible. See you here.